Thank you all for coming tonight. We are glad that you are here. Uh, we are so blessed to have Bogdan with us, and uh, we praise the Lord that you had your little boy Thomas with us tonight, and uh, we praise God for that, and uh, able to hook him up with some toys to keep him busy and occupied. Amen. And uh, we uh, want to let you know that before we get done tonight, uh, we will uh, give to this ministry, help this ministry uh, that God has called the Bible on to. Uh, let me read some scripture, then we will start tonight. I, first, I want to say I'm very thankful. It's, uh, I don't know. It, it, I, I don't know. Have you ever been here? This is my sister over here. Yeah, that's got her arms crossed and a bad mood right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sister and my niece sitting in front of her, right there. So, uh, love you, sis. Glad you're here. Amen. Yeah. And you too, Carrie. So, uh, anyway, and uh, Alice's sister, Martha, and maybe you've got a guest with you, but I'm just so proud to have my sister with me. Uh, so, uh, several scriptures I want to read, and I'm going to turn it over to Bogdan. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14 said, I looked and I rose up and said to the nobles and to the rulers, to the rest of the people, be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. He's great when he's on your side and terrible when he's against you. Amen. Amen. And fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And that's exactly what Bogdan has been going through. The enemy has been attacking them to the point that they're literally fighting for their own life, for their wives, for their sons, their daughters. And uh, as we mentioned in prayer a while ago, uh, you guys are going back to school tomorrow. Their schools are being bombed. Their churches are being bombed. And so I'm very thankful that I stand uh, inside the United States of America right now. Amen. We better not ever think that we can't be attacked. Right. Amen? Yeah. We not ever think that. So this is our brother in Christ that's here. So I'm going to read some scripture about that and, and turn him loose. Ephesians 4. Let's, let me start Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named. So that, that tells me that everybody on the face of this earth that is a believer is my brother in Christ. Amen? Right. Bogdan is our brother in Christ. Right. Amen? Every believer that's in the Ukraine is our brother and sister in Christ. In Ephesians 4, 5, said there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We all belong to the same Lord. Amen? 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one Spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, but we've been made to drink into one Spirit. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ tonight, we all have the same exact Holy Spirit that we believe into. Amen. And so does Baca. He is our brother in Christ. Amen. And so we, we have asked him to come here and share what God has laid upon his heart. Uh, normally he speaks for like two hours at a time, right, Baca? Come on. He's grinning, y'all. Don't, don't freak out. Good to have you, friend. Here's your microphone. Now, he doesn't have a West Kentucky slang like we do, so you better open up your ears. Amen? Right? Thank you very much. Get that out of your way. Hello, dear church. My name is Bogdan. Uh, sorry for my English. If you not understand me, don't worry. I know what my friends say not good and someone not understand for a lot of Americans. Uh, sorry because all my life I play soccer and uh, I not study English and uh, I very bad uh, study in school because soccer every day, a lot of hours and uh, not school, not homeworks and uh, my English is not good. But I believe what God bless you and uh, God give opportunity to understand what I mean. If you don't understand me, you can uh, you can uh, up and uh, ask questions if you don't understand. I'm from Ukraine. Uh, my family, my wife and uh, three kids, uh, we stay here four months. Uh, when war uh, started in uh, February 24, on second day, uh, Russian uh, tanks and uh, aircraft and helicopters come to Kyiv, Kyiv is the capital of Ukraine, and I'm from Kyiv. And on second day, I leave my home, I leave my dogs, my parents, my chickens, and uh, I move to, to Germany, and I drive car uh, three days, and 
First day I drive around 15 hours, second day 17 hours, and uh, third day 19 hours. And uh, we stay in Germany three weeks, and we make visa for our kids. And uh, in March we come here. And uh, I and my wife are missionary, 15 years, uh, full time. And uh, uh, I want to share with you my testimony uh, about my ministry and uh, how you can help. To us. And now uh, I and my wife and my kids we stay here and uh, usually every week, every Sunday we have opportunity to share the different churches about Ukraine and what God now do in Ukraine. Because you know in my country now war and a few thousand kids now die, a lot of families now not have father because father died in this war. And now in my country, very, very hard time. And if you can wake up in this morning and you can open eyes, you can thank you Jesus for this day. Amen. Because in my country, we don't have tornado, we don't have danger snakes, we don't have uh, danger uh, animals. We have just one danger. It's our danger neighbor. You understand? And. Uh, Yes, and uh, after 10 days, uh, my family, I, and my, my kids, my wife, we back to Ukraine. In August 15, we have a plane from Washington DC to Germany, and uh, we back to Ukraine because to Kyiv, because my ministry, uh, my church, a lot of uh, families wait, and we back and continue ministry. Because I and my wife, we are share gospel uh, with a lot of kids, a lot of families in Kyiv. And we have a lot of families uh, who believe in Christ, who follow to Jesus. Uh, my name is Bogdan. If uh, translate on your language, it's God-given, God-given life. Uh, my old sister gave me this name. Why? Because when I was inside my mom, before one day, when I was last uh, born in this world, my heart, my lungs start work. Doctor come to my mom and say, Dear mother, baby inside, stop, stop at life. Heart stop at work. Lungs not work. We must uh, maybe surgery and save you because you mom. Because kids inside die. And if you parents, if you have kids, you must understand how this heart listen information. But my mom is an uh, Orthodox Christian and uh, believes in Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is life. Amen. Amen. And my mom said, no, I must born this kid because I believe God can create miracle. Uh, when I was born, my small body, my heart, my lungs not work. And uh, I was born in the morning, 7 o'clock, and uh, 45 minutes, a lot of doctors helped me. And a lot of medicine, a lot of uh, equipment and uh, use, but uh, my heart, my lungs, no work. And after 45 minutes, the uh, doctor said to, uh, to my mom, we must prepare the body, move to work. It's a miracle what you save, but you, your son die and uh, no, no result. And uh, when doctor start prepare my, my body, move to work, uh, God touched my body, my heart, my lungs, and doctor stay look, and uh, I open eyes, and Amen. doctor Amen. stay on my mom, on my body, and not understand how is this possible. Two days, this baby died. A lot of doctors, a lot of medicine, no result. How is possible? And uh, my old sister understand it's from God and my old sister gave me name God given. It's Baghdad, God given life. Amen. And uh, my first and second year I, I lived in the hospital with my mom because my mom had big problem with health and I also had very big problem with health. My immunity system not work and doctor helped me a lot of medicine and it's good and not good for me. And uh, when I back to home with my mom, I grew up and uh, my mother and my father 
not good relationship because my father is uh, also a professional soccer player, a lot travel in Soviet Union, uh, live separate, live with different women. And in Soviet Union it's, it's normal if you have family, you have wife and you have few girls when you live with this. And I think maybe it's normal life if you have family and you have one woman on one year, second woman on second year. And I think it's normal. I also started playing soccer. I was very, very young. And uh, my father never hugged me, never, never kissed me, never said, Bogdan, I love you. Because in Soviet Union, uh, broken a lot of uh, men. In Soviet Union, propaganda work. You must work on government. And government care about your kids. You work on government and send your kids in kindergarten. Kindergarten care about your kids, but it's not true. You understand what I, what I say? Yeah? Because I look on your face and your face very serious. I understand maybe after a very good lunch, uh, dinner, sorry, or you are tired after work. And uh, when I grow up, I, have, I had also a very bad relationship with my father. Because my father not love my mom, not love me, and it's, it's, it's hard for me. When I finished school, I moved to Kyiv and I started studying college and I lived in the uh, ho um, dorms and uh, I remember this time because I had big problem with uh, my uh, liver, I had hepatitis C and my liver destruct every day and usually when I go to college I understand what I, my liver work not good, you understand? because distract every day and when I go to hospital, hospital doctor take my blood and say Bogdan, your liver not good because hepatitis C every day distract maybe 20, 23, 25 years you can live not more prepare maybe 25 years old and prepare to die because your liver distract but I remember what God created one time miracle in my life but I don't believe in Jesus and when I was on second year in, in college, in my room in dorms, I organized very big party. Uh, a lot, uh, very good music, a lot of girls, a lot of drinking. Because I understand, I had hepatitis C, my life very short. And I must test in this life all, what I can see, you understand, because my life very short. And uh, I remember this evening, when in my room, uh, I listened in door, to, 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 to special voice, open door in my rooms and uh, come for missionary from Campus Crusade to Christ. And uh, have this missionary have special uh, student journal and present for us. I said, oh no, 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 it's real, it's very bad man. Because in Ukraine, it's very strong Orthodox culture. If people from Protestant church, usually Ukrainians say, no, 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 it's not good. It's cult, it's maybe Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons, it's not good Christian. Because Soviet Union propaganda work very, very power. And in Soviet Union, in Russia now, people believe just one church go to Christ in heaven. It's Orthodox Church. And a lot of Christian believe this. And in Orthodox Church teach about rules. You must do this, you must do this, but in Orthodox Church not teach about Christ. How you can have relationship with Christ, how Christ can help you in, in this day, with your health, with your relationship with family. Not teach this. And when this missionary starts share about Christ, I have iron beats because I live in uh, dorms where usually uh, we have a lot of problems with uh, battle, a lot of boys, you know. And I prepare these beats and uh, I start ready to beat this missionary because I understand it's very bad people. It's not uh, not orthodox uh, missionary. It's maybe from from west, but it's not good. It's fake news, you know. Mm -hmm. But this missionary understand very serious boys, a lot of uh, boys drinking, and said, "Okay, bye bye. But if it's possible, we we back on next week." and ask what you think about this student's journal. We said, okay, go back, no problem. After one week, I think maybe it's uh, 
not work, but after one week this missionary back to my room in dorms and asked, hey guys, how are you? Do you read this student's journal? What do you think? Uh, it's a real, very good uh, student's journal about uh, soccer, about music, about this world. And uh, this missionary second time shared gospel with me and my friends who live with me in my rooms. But I continue not believe him. Two months, every week, this missionary come to my room and share about Christ with me. Amen. I don't know why this missionary back to my room every month. I don't know why. I, I believe what God has planned. How save me. Amen. And after two months, this missionary said, Hey, we organized a very good uh, student's party. Please, come. I go to the student's party. I think maybe disco, a lot drinking, a lot drugs. Mm -hmm. But when I come to the student's party, the student's evening, I and my friends, um, we stay, look, and I don't understand. A lot of students, maybe 40, 50 students, very happy, very big smile. I stay and I don't understand. I look, no, no, no alcohol. I look in eyes, no drugs. And I ask my friends who know Christian, hey, in what problem? Why is the students very happy? Why is the students very big have smile? I don't understand. When students come to me and share gospel, share gospel also and share testimony how Jesus changed lives of students. And I understand, ah, it's real stupid students. All believe in Christ. A real propaganda war. I understand. No, it's not for me. Thank you very much. Not work in my life. But this missionary start encourage me and uh, say, Bogdan, please, uh, back on next week, this student's <coughs> evening, please back to student's Bible group. I don't know why. I don't believe in Christ. But I start go to this Bible group, I start go to, to the student's evening. And after two months, in summer, this missionary invite me and my friends to summer camp. <laughs> I never been on students camp. Uh, I remember I had uh, 90 years old and I, I understand it's a real missionary from cult because it's missionary four months built relationship with me now invite me and my friends to a uh, students camp real kill me take my organs and send to Moldova or Romania because in Soviet Union it's a very popular business if you have borrow if you borrow very big you can go to hospital, doctor can take your organs and sale and borrow zero. And I think, huh, I had hepatitis C after few years, I died, I'm not afraid, no problem, go to this camp. And uh, I go to this camp with my friends and I understand, hmm, very serious made organization, a lot of money. And when I come to this camp, not what? Maybe I'm late. When I come to this camp, I remember this time. One, two, three. What? Yeah, it's better. Yeah. I remember this day when I come to this uh, camp, I look 100 students. Every day the students read Bible, every day pray before breakfast, uh, lunch, dinner, and I not understand in what problem. Why these 100 students follow to Jesus Christ? Why? Jesus, I have big, I have big, big questions. Jesus is real or Jesus Christ is fake? Because in my mentality, I understand, I just must go to church every Sunday, but not more. And usually Orthodox Church cheats this. Go to church, his cross, give uh, money, not read Bible, not have relationship with Christ. And uh, I remember this camp, seven days. I very serious look how live these students. And when I back to, to, to home after this camp, one missionary, uh, his name is Sergei, Sergei present for me New Testament. On this camp, and Sergey said me, Bogdan, please read New Testament one month every day. And after one month, you very good understand. 
who this Jesus Christ. When I back to home after this camp, I start reading this New Testament every day, three hours. When my mom look how I read book, my mom touch my head and ask, Bogdan, you are sick? <laughs> Nine years old. First time I can see how you read book because every day soccer, no book, first book in my life. It's my first book in my life, what I read from first page to finish. One month, every day, three hours. And when I back after summer holiday to, to college in September, I continue to go to Bible group. And I start to believe, made the real, Jesus is true. And I understand if Jesus is true, is it true, I must receive Jesus Christ in my life. Because I have a very big problem in my life, you understand? And I remember my first prayer in my life when I stay at home and I say, Jesus, I believe in you. Please, sorry. A lot of sins in my life I do. A lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, big problem with my family, and uh, a lot of relationship broken. Sorry. Please, give me a strange live this uh, life with you. I said, Jesus, I understand you create miracle when I was born. And I asked Jesus, I have Big problem in hepatitis C. Please help me. When I open my heart to Christ, after two months, I stop and use all bad words. When I communicate with my friend in college, my friends don't understand what I say. But then, what do you say? What do you mean? Because I stop and use all bad words, just good words. After four, after four months, God gave me strange, and I stop at smoking and drinking. Zero. Amen. 19 years. Zero alcohol, zero smoking. Amen. And when I showed this, my, my friends in Durham asking me, Bogdan, you are sick? It's propaganda. It's uh, people, it's this missionary from this cult invite, have big influence on your life. I said, no, friends. One year, I look how live this Christian student. One year, I... Uh, I send a lot of questions to the students and I ask. I test this missionary, I test the students. Believe me, Jesus is real. Amen. And one year <coughs> I wait and now I open my heart to Christ. And now I live with Jesus Christ. Amen. And I remember when I start sharing the gospel in my dorms, I remember the reaction uh, my friends. My friends not understand me. My friends think maybe Bogdan used a lot of drugs. And uh, it's a popular uh, share about Christ. My friends think maybe it's fake, you know. And uh, after two years in my doors, 15 students believe in Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, 15 students baptized in my church, in one church. After two years, I back how I repent and believe in Christ. I back to hospital, uh, 20, 21 years old. Doctor take my blood. I said, Bogdan, not understand, not good result. I said, oh my goodness, maybe one week and I die. Doctor said, Bogdan, please tomorrow back to hospital. I must uh, take your blood second time. To, on next day, I back to hospital. Doctor second time take my blood. I said, Bogdan, you understand? Two years ago, you have resolved what you had hepatitis C. Now, Result, you not have hepatitis C, and I don't understand. It's maybe broken uh, test, or it's maybe Chinese test, or who knows. But I don't understand it. What problem? I said, no, no, no. It's not Chinese test. Believe me. Two years ago, I believe in Christ, and two years I pray and I ask God about the opportunity uh, my hepatitis C, because doctor said me no kids, no wife, please, because sick, and you liver destructive every day. And now I can say to you, I am 37 years old, not here in hepatitis C. And I am free. And Jesus created miracle in all life who open to Jesus. Amen. And when I finished university, I asked about, I asked Christ, what about my future? What must what I must do? And I very clearly understand what Jesus called me work with students. And I start working in campus to save for Christ, full-time ministry. 
full-time missionary for 14 years. And 14 years I work in Kyiv and I work in Donetsk. Donetsk is East Ukraine. And when I was in Donetsk 2014, I remember when in 2014 uh, Russian uh, soldiers first time come to East Ukraine. I live one month with these Russian terrorists. And I remember this picture. It's very, very hard, believe me. And I remember when in 2014, I first time uh, was refugees. When I leave my church, my home, and I move from Donetsk, from East, I move to Central Ukraine, to Kyiv. After eight years, in this February, I second time refugees, because the Russians come to Kyiv. It's very hard. It's very hard for me back to Kyiv, because I don't know what God prepared for me. Every day Russians come, a lot of missiles come to Ukraine. Every day a lot of churches, kindergarten, hospital, apartments, disrupt. A lot of people die every day. And I don't know, I came back on next summer to your church or no, I don't know. But I believe what God called me and my family back to Ukraine. I very clearly understand. And two years ago, I and my wife uh, finished working Campus Crusade. It's a very good American organization, and uh, we start working different uh, Ukrainian Christian organization. It's Ukrainian Christian Sports Academy. UXA, Ukrainian Christian Sports Academy. It's first Christian Sports Academy in all Europe. And I work and I share gospel with a young family and with young kids. Before war, I had uh, 200 uh, small professional soccer player and my wife worked in the education center. It's 60, 60, 65 kids. And I use soccer for shared gospel. My wife used education for shared gospel. And this work very nice in my culture. Why? Because for you culture, for America, it's very clear to understand. Christian school or Christian academy, for you it's no problem. In Ukraine it's problem because just orthodox. Orthodox Church not have sports academy. Orthodox Church not have Christian school. You must understand this. And a lot of families who no Christian, not believing. But in one time, these families look it's professional soccer. It's very high quality education. And this family started believing. Usually in Ukraine, if you pastor, you must work. If I missionary, I also must work. Because if I just la 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 la, people won't believe me. In Ukraine, people say, show me your hands, show me what you can do. And after, I can listen, I read the listen what you say about Christ. And usually I work on sports academy. Well, in the morning, I a lot of uh, help with different jobs. Every evening, I share gospel. I missionary with my wife from uh, full time. And uh, it's a big privilege. Because I have few hundred stories how God used me and a lot of people believe in Christ. I can stay here a few days and share about the story in different places how, how people repent and follow to Jesus. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I'm very happy what God used me and my family. And now my ministry, um, we rent a big warehouse in Poland and two American organizations sent a lot of food, medicine and dress to Poland. And we need uh, found support here for big truck because one big truck from Poland to Ukraine it's six hundred dollars. Three months we um, give food for one million Ukrainians. Yeah. You you can help me in this because if you send your support we can send a lot of trucks. We have opportunity to send in one day eight trucks. It's in one day you understand how much money I need. Second, on our sports academy in Kyiv, we finished a uh, built shelter. Shelter is a big hostel for 200 refugees. It's women and uh, children who from East Ukraine and from South Ukraine who need their place to live because apartment destroyed because father die on war. And in this November, our shelter on Sports Academy opened. 
and a lot, a lot of families wait this. Because usually in Ukraine now Protestant church very active. And Protestant church use this room and different room for refugees. If I show you how live now Protestant church, you in shock because in this room live uh, in my country war uh, five months. In this room five months live maybe 100 people. It's children, it's families, because it's people not have place to live. You must understand this. If you have home, if you have a good refrigerator with food, believe me, thank Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. Because my brothers and sisters in Ukraine don't have this. It's a miracle. And in November we open our shelter for a lot of refugees. And if you uh, can opportunity help to finish this hostel. Now we work inside workers. We need a lot of beds for sleep, we need a lot of furniture, it's, uh, we need a lot of $85,000, $87,000 we need now for finished all workers. Because in Ukraine now it's very, very big need. God save Kyiv, God save our sports academy, God save uh, education center, God save a lot of kids. And now in Sports Academy we start organize soccer camp and uh, around 50 kids every day. And for us it's a very good opportunity to share gospel with these kids, share gospel with this family. And how you can help for us? Uh, you can pray, because believe me, uh, your church stay in prayer. It's, it, it's encouraged me. Because in USA I four months and just Today it's first time how pastor with different church members pray together. It's amazing. Yeah. You church love prayer, and I believe God bless you. Please pray about Ukraine every Sunday because a lot of stories how God sent Ukraine. We have a lot of stories how Russian paratroopers from Belarus uh, jumping to Ukraine. God sent power wind the paratroopers back to Belarus. We have stories how uh, children play on playground, Russian missiles six feet baba on this playground and not work. Children stay, look, six feet, Russian missiles, no work. I have stories how Christian family prepare food in morning on kitchen room, listen. <coughs> Go to living room, look, Russian missiles. No work. I have a lot of stories how Russian submarine won't attack South Ukraine. God sent big wave and back. Hello, hello stories. Believe me, prayers work. Please pray about Ukraine. Please pray about my family, about safety. Please pray about this. Second, if you have opportunity, send support to refugees to finish uh, our shelter or send support to big truck for gas because now in Ukraine gas is life. Because we have stories how a lot of Ukrainians not eat one month. A lot of Ukrainians now use water from rain because not have food in rain. And now gas is life. And in Poland, we have a lot of food, a lot of medicine, a lot of dress, a lot of water. And we have opportunity to send to Ukraine. But we need support on one track. And you have opportunity, you can send every month, so I don't know how it's possible for you. But you can help our brothers and sisters. And I want to encourage you. Uh, in Ukraine, in your culture and my culture is different culture. And I understand what I say. It's real, maybe a lot not understand for you, or maybe not interesting for you. But believe you, our brothers and sisters in Ukraine now need your prayers and need your help. Because when we, when we stay in heaven before Christ, heaven asks in us how we help. Amen. And I believe what God bless you, God bless America, I love this. You're a very happy nation, you're a very blessed nation, because a lot of missionaries you send. A lot of support you send, and I, for me, it's a miracle you you found it. I pray for me, yeah, and uh, please pray for my nation. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Mike. Thank you for the